the model that we want to start with for AP Macro is the production possibilities frontier, or what a lot of books term nowadays the production possibilities curve. I like to think of it as a frontier, and I'll explain that once I draw it for you in just a second. Now, like other models that you're going to be dealing with, it is an oversimplification of reality. In real life, most countries are not deciding between production of only two products or only two categories of products, but it does give us a way to look at the world, you know, albeit simplistically, it gives us a starting point. So, the way you want to draw this, as you're going to draw almost everything else in economics, is using the first quadrant, if you're familiar with how graphing works. So, we're doing some graphic skills. This is your first quadrant. Zero is here. You have positive numbers going out in each direction. X axis, Y axis. Okay, so the graphing is pretty much going to stay in the first quadrant. So that's where we're going to start. Okay, That's why for most of the graphs, you're going to see your axes that just look like two L's, you know, look like an L shape. That's why. Okay. All right. So to draw the production possibilities frontier, again, you're starting with first quadrant. Just get in the habit of always putting in zero. It's good to have them there just so we don't forget that's the origin. And we're increasing in both of those directions. Now, a classic example that you might see is comparing production of something agricultural with something technological. So let's go with soybeans and robots. What about guns and butter? You cool it for about five minutes. All right, that's my cameraman throwing in his two cents. All right. So if we're comparing two products that are very different, then the resources that are going to be used to produce one are not going to be 100% interchangeable with the resources that are used to produce the other. For example, to produce robots, you probably don't need harvesters and seeds and fertilizer um, because generally we don't seed a field with, you know, robot seeds and then, you know, harvest them as baby robots and let them so your resources are not interchangeable. That means that the shape of your, of your curve is not going to be an absolute straight line. It's going to be bowed away from zero. Now, we can look at some different points that you might see on a graph like this and look at the different regions that are created. A point that is on an axis meaning an intercept between the PPF and either your X or Y axis, such as point A or point B, represents 100% production of only the one commodity or product that's on that axis. So at point A, we are producing a lot of soybeans and no robots. At point B, we are producing a maximum number of robots and no soybeans. Again, it's not realistic. It is a simplification, but we're going to play with this at different points throughout the course. So it's good to understand how the pieces fit together now. All right. Now, a few possibilities. We might be somewhere on the frontier. Let's say we're at point C or point D. Any point that is on your PPF is going to represent productive efficiency. There are two types of efficiency. Productive efficiency means that you are using all of your resources to their greatest benefit. You don't have underemployment or unemployment of any one of your resources. People, machines, um, you don't have factories sitting idle, you don't have land that's not being used, for example. So any point on the curve is productively efficient, that's good from one perspective. Okay, so on the curve, you are efficient. If you are under the curve, let's say we're at point E, obviously that's a point that we could reach because this point is low in 
terms of full soybeans and robots. But we don't want to be there because anything under the curve or under your frontier represents unemployment in at least one significant resource. If we're this far under the curve, then we probably have unemployed people and idle plant capacity, which is a big way of saying nobody's going to work in the factory. Maybe you have inventories piling up because people are not buying stuff. So under the curve, while we can achieve those points, is not good. That's really not where you want to be. Now, another point that you'll see with a PPF is a point that is maybe outside somewhere. Now, this is why I like to call it a frontier. The curve represents all of the levels that are achievable at the current level of resources and technology. This is all stuff that we can get to today. Point F way up here is not achievable at current levels. Caris paribus, this is what we have. So unless we change something, we cannot get away from or beyond this curve. Okay, it is a frontier. To move beyond the frontier, we have to start monkeying around with you know, whatever particular situation we're in. So, on the curve, productive efficiency. Now, the other type of efficiency that we are worried about in any economy is allocative efficiency. To allocate means you're looking at how things are divided up. So, perhaps, the economy represented by this diagram is in a place where people prefer a lot of soybeans and fewer robots. If that is what people prefer, then point C represents allocative efficiency. So allocative efficiency to be the point where your marginal benefit equals your marginal cost. And this is a very important principle. Remember that when we're talking about a marginal change, we're looking at an incremental change. So for example, if we go from point A, producing a lot of soybeans and no robots, to point C, we're on our curve. We are productively efficient in either one of those points. At point C, if our marginal benefit equals our marginal cost, then that says, okay, we have people in the society who are willing to give up enough other resources that they're happy with what they're getting here. You're giving up this many soybeans to gain this many robots. So let's look at that for a minute. Between point A and point C, if we're talking about a marginal change between those two points, this is our loss, and this is our gain. We're giving up this amount of soybeans for this amount of robots. Now, for this particular economy, maybe everybody's pretty much okay with that. If you look at a different economy, maybe they would rather be at point D, where you're giving up more soybeans and getting more robots, getting closer to the maximum robots. But it all depends on this point, where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So the purpose of a PPF is to demonstrate where we are, it's like taking a snapshot of one very simplistic aspect of an economy, and you have to demonstrate that you have an understanding of what it means to be fully employed and to be underemployed. So that's the first part here. 